Hello, everybody. I'm Carl Wells, and this is Summer Scene from St. John's. You may have seen a picture of my guests today recently on the front page of the St. John's Evening Telegram. Uh, they're here today to talk about a project they're involved in, which is in connection with the 400th anniversary celebrations, the Sir Humphrey Gilbert celebrations. Um, all I'll say about it is that it involves playing Elizabethan music. I'll let them tell you the rest. Uh, my guests are Josephine Harriet and Charles Harriet. I almost feel like I should be in costume conducting this interview today, <laughs> dressed like Sir Walter Raleigh or somebody. Uh, Josephine, first of all, tell us uh, exactly what the project is all about. This is a 400th anniversary celebration project funded by the Government of Canada, the Department of the Secretary of State, and the Government of Newfoundland, Department of Recreation, Culture and Youth. And what exactly is it that you're going to be doing? We are providing Elizabethan music for d dinners, luncheons, various functions and just at little spots around the town to set the scene and put people back in the Elizabethan era for a few minutes. In costume, In costume obviously. and with all the music from that period. I should point out that it's, it's not just yourself and Charles. No, we are also joined by um, our other son, Michael, right. who is uh, not here with us today. Okay. Um, these costumes that you're wearing, uh, they're very beautiful, by the way. Thank you. Um, Thanks. <laughs> who designed? <laughs> Are you not crazy about that outfit, Charles? Or? Oh, no, I, that's fine. I love it. It's yeah. great. Okay. Um, you wouldn't want to wear it every day, though. Oh, not every day. No, just on, <laughs> just on the occasions yeah. and stuff. Um, who designed these? Well, I, uh, I went to the library and, and got out some costume books and came up with some designs, and then I looked for suitable material and made them myself. How long did it take you to make these? Quite a long time. The sleeves of the men's costumes were the most involved part. They, they took hours to make. But um, they, they were quite time consuming. I spent most of July making the costumes, June and July. Now, this wouldn't have been the dress that the average Elizabethan would have worn, would it? Uh... Um, the, ch the costume that Charles has on would be a, a, a troubadour, a troubadour yeah, this type be... costume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This would be. Uh the type thing that um, Sir Humphrey Gilbert would have had his troubadours wear on the ship that, that he came over on. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Um, now, what the, the music that you're going to be performing is Elizabethan music. Right. Who would the uh, composers be, for example, of the, of the pieces you'll be performing? Well, the principal composers are Dowland and Campion. John Dowland, yeah. Yeah. From the year, uh, from from Elizabeth I era, yeah, same yes. era. So he's the principal composer. Yeah. John Dowland and Thomas Campion is the other one. So they were the the major composers of the Elizabethan. There were there were a lot period. of others, but these two were majoring in on because they're the same era as the uh, Sir Humphrey Gilbert era. I see. Yeah. What would the difference be uh, between, say, the Elizabethan type music and the music of another? period. Uh, what distinguishes Elizabethan music from others? Well, you're still not dealing with harmony. You're still dealing with melody and not strict rhythm, not strict key even. They didn't have major or minor key as we know it today. And uh, the instrumentation is very gentle, low key type thing. It's not the type of thing you would amplify in any way. And uh, we're also doing some madrigals later on in August, which are four part but the voices sort of intertwine rather than, you know, just like your, your regular four-part that you know now. These instruments now, um, how did you acquire these? These were uh, made especially for you? Yes, these were made by my husband, John. He mm -hmm. made the lute and, uh, and the Celtic harp. The harp as well. Yes. A Celtic harp? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Charles, you don't play no, I don't play. Michael plays. He's been playing for the past three or four years, isn't it? Yes. And yeah. he plays. We just brought it along to show you. Uh, Michael not only plays the, the, the lute, of course, he plays... Uh, he plays trumpet and piano, yes. Uh, right, because yes. uh, he's performed uh, several times in the festival. That's and so right. And he also... Won awards, hasn't he? Right, yes, he, he has. He also had to play the trumpet in the uh, pageant that we took part in last Friday and Saturday for the arrival of Sir Humphrey Gilbert at the War Memorial. 
So he had to play the trumpet for the fanfare, and then we had to perform as part of the uh, little pageant. Yeah. This business of playing various instruments, that's something that's always intrigued me. Um, once you've learned to read music and ma mastered one instrument, is it fairly easy to uh, learn how to play others? Well, yes, it is. It just mm. takes a little practice to get used to the new concept, whatever it is, blowing or plucking or... <laughs> um, Charles, you're the singer. I the sing, group. yeah. I also play the bassoon, um, the clarinet and saxophone. Mm -hmm. I started off with the clarinet and then went on to the bassoon. And the saxophone is easier to, to pick up than all the others. What would you be, would you be a tenor? I'm character? a tenor. tenor. Uh -huh. The light tenor voice is appropriate for most of these Dowland songs. So uh, tenors would have been pretty popular back in the Elizabethan period. Then. Tenors and uh, contra tenors, they sing yes. uh, uh, higher, higher, yes. an octave yeah. and a half higher. So, yes. what is it about t the tenor voice that makes it so popular? I wonder. Uh, seems like all through history, tenors have been very popular. Uh, uh, the Gilles and Caruso's and, and now the Placido Domingo's and uh, Pavarotti's. I guess it's audience demand. Yeah. You just have to please the audience and uh, and I guess tenors too often have solo parts, you know. But um, Charles's voice is particularly suitable to the music of this era and uh, he's, he's always been complimented on this particular fact in, in the festivals and this year he did win the Sir Humphrey Gilbert 400th anniversary scholarship in the Kiwanis Music Festival. Oh, well, congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> uh, I should also point out that uh, Charles appeared in the recent CBC special that we did on Sir Humphrey Gilbert. Cornerstone of Empire, as did Michael as well. Oh, of course. Yeah. Right, yes. Yeah. Charles was singing and Michael played a uh, post-horn. Post-horn. Uh, the selection of the music that uh, you perform, uh, was that a difficult task? Deciding no, what you were going to play? We selected from the repertoire that we were most familiar with because this was mm, stuff that we could be really sure about. We didn't want to embark into too much new material and then not feel confident with it. It was just a coincidence, actually, that uh, at the same time, I'm, I, 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 I love this Elizabethan music and it just so happens it's just the right year for the right, it. Yeah, <laughs> the right year for it. Well, what is it about the Elizabethan music that uh, you like so much? I don't know. It's just, it's, it's not easy by no means. It's not easy. It's, it's hard. It's a real challenge. It uh, takes a lot of really good breath control to re make it really come over well, which is, which I, which is what I like. I like the, that challenge. It's really good. Have you had help in uh, mastering these pieces? Yes, um, Gwent Lewis, a, a, an excellent uh, singing teacher around town. He was fantastic. He really gave me a lot of help with that. Gwent's been here for several years now, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, when, when people go out to see your program, uh, is it just the music that they'll be entertained by, or do you want, does one of you act as a master of ceremonies and sort of explain what the pieces are about and that sort of well, thing? Well, this depends upon the circumstances that we find ourselves in. If it is appropriate for, for an MC type situation, then, you know, Charles would be very good at doing that. But mostly we just go into a, a restaurant or a hotel or whatever and just provide a little background music and sometimes we move around the room so as to get other people have a chance to to hear what, what it is we're doing. We played at some rather noisy luncheons at City Hall last week and beyond sort of the very close tables they could hardly hear what we were doing so we had to move around the room to play to various tables. That luncheon at City Hall was the one at which uh they entertain the Lord Mayor of Plymouth. We played at two luncheons. We, we played for the Lord Mayor of Plymouth and the Gilbert family were also at that luncheon and one or two dignitaries from Plymouth. And, uh, and then we played on Thursday for the Royal Hamilton Yacht Club. That was a very noisy luncheon. <laughs> All those <laughs> it sailors. Yeah. It was fun though. Yes. It was a f good experience. It was a very oh, good yeah. experience and they were most appreciative of the, um, you know, the, the music right. we provided, yes. When you, when you, uh, launched yourself on this project uh, in the beginning, uh, were you at all nervous about uh, getting involved in this sort of thing? Nervous perhaps about the, the reaction you would get from the public? I wasn't nervous about the reaction we'd get from the public. I didn't even think about that. But I was a little overawed by the enormous responsibility of the project. But once we started going and people were very appreciative, it gave us a lot of confidence to continue. You don't really have enough time to, to think no, about it. No, we didn't it, have time to stop and think. Running here and running there all day. <laughs> 
running around in costume yet. <laughs> how, long, uh, how long would one of your programs last, for example? Well, we have played for an hour and a half, but that is quite demanding, keeping up the, uh, keeping up the momentum for that length of time. So we try to pace ourselves a little more now, yeah. Is it at all hard on your, hard on your fingers? No, it's, uh, not, it's not hard on the fingers. There isn't a lot of tension there. I guess yeah. it's something, too, that you get used to. That's after right, time. yes. You almost do it mechanically after a while. Did you go through a, a rehearsal period? Yes, we did. Started? Yes, for a whole month we were rehearsing and putting, putting the act together and then shaping up the program, what would sound well after which one, you know. And we have some three-part madrigals and some rounds that we intersperse with the Dowland songs. And so this, you know, adds a high and a low to the program so that they don't just have low-key music all the time. So <clears throat> Tell us something about uh, your own background in music, Josephine. Well, I've been playing since I was about five. Really? And that's a long, long time ago. <laughs> and, uh, and then I, I took a degree in music when I was a student. And I've been teaching ever since. So that's a long, long time as well. What, what do you teach? I teach piano and theory, mm -hmm. yes. And do you enjoy that? Oh, yes, very much, yes. So performing is something you don't do that much of. No, performing is actually something that is fairly new to me because I, I was really, to tell you the truth, very nervous about performing. And I, where the rest of the family was so able to go forward and do this, I, I stayed in the background. But circumstances were that I, I had to do it. And I, I found I've got a little confidence after all. Well, good for you. Uh, Charles, are you planning on a career in music, perchance? Um, I have given it some thought, but since everyone else in the family's in music, I figure I want to be different. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Not sure. Either. Do you have anything in mind at all? Or? Either I love to do, I love to act as a profession, but uh, it's really not that stable. Um, otherwise, I don't know what I'm going to do. Sort of up in the air in university, taking all weird courses like German and Russian and things like that. <laughs> are, are all of your children music? musically inclined or? Well, they have all had the opportunity to play instruments or take instruction because I feel it is very important for a children for children to have a means of saying this is me this is what I can do it doesn't matter whether they turn out to be good at it or mediocre if they have the opportunity when they when they're young then they might wish to pursue it when they're older if not they've always got a hobby a musician always has something to do true um, Charles mentioned that he was particularly interested in the Elizabethan type of music. Is there any particular uh, music that you're interested in yourself more than others? Um, no, as a family we, we have always enjoyed music of that period, but uh, otherwise I'm very Catholic in my taste. Mm -hmm. um, you were telling me a little earlier about composing some arrangements for... Uh, no, we, we just had to write the arrangements. We, did, we haven't got oh. any original compositions. No, I see. They, yeah, just, yeah. We had to arrange the parts for our instrumentation, mm -hmm. yeah. Are any of you involved in composing at all? Uh, well, Richard, he's not with us, of course, on mm -hmm. this project, but he is quite a composer. He does quite a lot of composing, yeah. Um, yes, and Michael had to write the fanfare that they played at the pageant, too. He had to compose that. Mm -hmm. uh, people who are as involved in music as, as you people are uh, must really have a great love for it. Um, yes, you can't live without it. Mm -hmm. It's just a, a compulsion that, you know, you, you just have to be surrounded and immersed in it nearly all the time. You just can't live without it. You can't live very long without playing or singing or whatever it is you do, and you can't live very long without putting the radio or a record on. Or wearing your Walkman or... <laughs> <laughs> do you yes. find that you have to listen to a piece uh, every day or play every day or...? Yes, it is a daily thing. Um, for example, um, as I mentioned a little while ago, Richard, I don't think he can probably go more than about two hours without actually playing the piano. <laughs> really? Yes, I mean, I don't suppose as many of us, as, uh, the rest of us are as affected as that, but even so, you... It is a very important part of your life. It's something that I guess is part of your essence and, and you just can't get away from it. Um, 
looking at you in these costumes here today, uh, you look as though you just stepped out of the Elizabethan period. Uh, mm. if, if you could step inside a time capsule and go back into the Elizabethan period, uh, do you think you'd like to do that? Do you think you would have liked to have lived during that time? I'd love to. I, I think it was fantastic. Why? Um, the feeling you'd get. I know I'd get a fantastic feeling out of it. I think it was fantastic. Just I think there were drawbacks, too. <laughs> well, there might have been some, but I don't know. Pace of life would have been very different. It would have been a much slower pace of life. And, and I think the importance, where we have so much importance on material aspects today, I think they would have put more importance on actual living. Uh, were, there, were there many musicians at that time? Uh, were, were, were people actually making a living yes. playing music? Oh, yes. The, there were um, resident and wandering troubadours who actually had a much better chance at making a living than probably musicians do today. You know? And there would have been resident court musicians. Every, every manor or court castle would have had several or at least one musician. And, uh, this is, this is why a lot of the compositions came about, and uh, this is where, you know, they would have been entertained every night in the same way that we have been entertaining at the hotels. Of course, that was uh, Shakespeare's time, too. That's right, yeah. And the theater was pretty popular. That's I imagine right. the theaters yeah. would have employed uh, musicians as, as well. As well, right, yes. Yeah. But they didn't have unions, you see, so... <laughs> <laughs> Money wasn't too good in those days. Um, where exactly now is, is your tour going to take you? On well, this, project. this um, we spent last week um, running around St. John's, literally, and uh, yesterday we were in Clarenville, and then this evening we're performing at the Gander Hotel, and then we are going on to the airport to entertain a departing flight. I think people have to wait around for that midnight flight to Britain, mm -hmm. so we will be out there about 10 or 10.30. And then tomorrow we drive to Cornerbrook, where we will be performing at the Glenmill Hotel and probably the Mall on Thursday. Friday, we are due to go on the QE2 at 4 o'clock. It will be docked at Cornerbrook. And Friday evening, we will play again at the Glenmill Hotel. And then Saturday, we'll drive back to St. John's to get ready for our next week's commitments. And when, when does this all wind up? Um, well, we're, we're sort of due to wind up around the 31st of August, what we might carry on until Labor Day if they want us, but we are due to play for a, another cruise ship that is coming into St. John's on the 18th of September, so we can't mm -hmm. put our costumes away before then. Yeah. Um, generally, how has how's the reaction been to this? So far, it's been very, very receptive, very warm, very, very encouraging. Have people been coming up and uh, asking you questions about your costumes and the music and so on? Yes, they have indeed, and there's been a lot of interest in, in what we're doing, and people have been most appreciative of the fact that we've put them back into the Elizabethan era in music and, and just for a few minutes of their time. What, can you remember any of the questions they've asked? Uh, were, were there any interesting questions that stand in your mind? There were a couple I got. Uh, people requested, requested songs. I was sort of amazed that they you know, knew any music from that period. And, uh, oh, so, so they actually knew uh, pieces oh, from... Oh, some, some of the people did. Uh, some people at the Yacht, the Yacht Club uh, luncheon uh -huh. requested some songs. We didn't have them. We didn't know them. Um, they weren't written by any of the composers we, uh, we had heard of. So, uh, so we couldn't help them out with that, but uh, they, they liked what we were doing. So it was really encouraging. That's, that's great. Um, um, your, uh, your future plans now, after this project uh, clues up, do you have any other things in mind that you'd like to do after having gone through this experience? I should think probably by the end of this project we should be glad to retire from it for a little <laughs> while because it is fairly high pressured yeah. and we'll be glad to get back to our normal hectic day-to-day -day living. Yeah. You will, of course, return to your teaching. I will return to my teaching. Charles will return to university and Michael to grade 12. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it you're studying at university? You're studying music or...? Um, no, sort of... I, I'm an undecided, basically, and I'll probably be an undecided until I graduate. <laughs> <laughs>
tell us about your your voice uh, lessons again. What what's that training like? Is that a rigorous kind of training? Um, not rigorous. It's uh, you have to keep at it in order to get anywhere. Um, it's good training. What does it involve? What if you, what's what's a session like with your voice coach? Um, um, well, it's just we we usually go over a few exercises and then we right. uh, stay at that for about fifteen minutes and then the rest of the lesson um, just go over different songs. Breath control, I think, Breath. is a pretty important oh, thing. Yeah. Eh? And lots of time with exercises. Yeah, doing scales and yeah. that sort of thing. I guess the scales tend to be a monotonous kind of. Oh, uh, well, they are monotonous, procedure. but then you can have fun and uh, mm -hmm. make up your own different. How long would it take you to learn one piece? Um, a piece. Um, you just don't learn it in half an hour. Uh, it would depend on the difficulty. Some pieces you can get off fairly it's quickly, and others would. Some be. pieces, the tune might be memorable. Some tunes, some tunes might not be so memorable. Yeah. Therefore, it takes lots of practice. I guess there's some notes which are kind of hard to strike, too. And the big thing with singing is always to remember all the words, of course. Words, yeah. yes. And then yeah. It's good when you're singing German songs, because you can make up the words. <laughs> not too many people know. I guess you've done that on occasion, have you? I have, yes. <laughs> well, I wish you much luck in this project. And uh, thank you very much for being with me today. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.